X cons of reddit, what was the hardest prison habit to break after being released? Not me personally, but I know a guy that said, after he got out he just wanted McDonald's. When he got there he spent 20 minutes staring at the menu trying to decide what to order, because he wasn't used to having choices. Staring at sharp things. Like there's no desire to use them inappropriately, but you are just kinda shocked fear there, and available for use. You might be surprised what qualifies as a sharp object. I remember whenever someone tried to hand me a knife or something to cut Vegas I'd be afraid to touch it. Glass was the biggest thing though, just mirrors in all the bathrooms. Real ones. I could smash the shoot, and have a big jagged weapon. I can't believe this Italian restaurant has such a dangerous thing in their bathroom. Stopping thinking of objects as weapons is hard. One of my foster sons came to us from juvie. Every meal his arm was around his plate and he whiffed down his food. My mastiff cold and keep up. He always ate back to the wall hunched. Took my wife and I a month to show him no one would take his food and we had plenty more. Funny part is he went in the marines and did 8 years got out honorable and is now working in corrections. I still like. Having a stash of ramen packs somewhere, even if I'm not going to eat them. Taking a shoot with my underwear up to my thighs to hide my junk. It took a long time to go back to pants around the ankles. Not wearing shoes in the shower. Eating with forks and knives. Having salt and pepper for food. Not always having to watch your back. Being able to get food when you want it and just get up and leave to go for a drive or something. I don't smoke, but every time someone offered me a cig I would pocket it. On the inside that's a bartering chip, took me about a month or two to break. I eat fast. I don't sit with my back to the door in public. I always scan crowds constantly. I question why people are nice to me. I carry extra clothes, water, and various other things in my car in case I need it. Not a hoarder, but harder to get rid of stuff I don't like, being away from home overnight. I also quit eating boiled eggs, I overseason my food, and I refuse to drink Kool-Aid anymore. With the questioning, when people are nice to you, I knew someone in prison before, and I was the only one who maintained contact with him during his term. He too had the same issue, why are you writing me slash being nice to me, etc. That's the one thing I never understood, were friends, I have no hidden motives, why would you ask that, that baffled me too. Why is it you can't trust others? Is it possible for someone to be legitimately nice to you without expecting anything in return? How can someone be sincere towards you and mean it, and help you understand that there's nothing wrong, and I expect nothing back, I'm nice to be nice, it is still something I can't get through to him, and it has hurt our friendship, because he's so untrusting. How can we help? Hoard feminine hygiene products. We were super limited on the number of pads or tampons they gave us. They didn't give any to the women in holding cells. There was dried and fresh menstrual blood on the floor and concrete benches and a drain in the middle of the rooms like they intended to hose down the room. But if they did it was not often enough. I didn't use a fork for a few weeks. Ate everything with a spoon without thinking. It's not the most interesting thing but I hadn't noticed it posted here. Constantly looking over my shoulder, by far the hardest conditioning to break, which I haven't and doubt I ever will, is the constant pessimism and cautious optimism. You see, when you're waiting to work your way through court, get a deal, and get sentenced, you will have your dates changed 50 times, hope for certain things only to be disappointed, and any time you are told something hopeful it doesn't work out. As a result, I never get excited for something until it actually happens. When my wife told me we were pregnant I already knew from her symptoms that she was but still, you never know for sure till you take the test, I was obviously happy, but because I'm always cautiously optimistic and rarely show emotion, I cold and feel comfortable or excited until I knew that my developing daughter was healthy. Even then, it didn't really hit me till she was born. You can apply this to anything especially big events. Getting engaged, planning the wedding, buying a house, anything. I still hear from my wife how I wasn't crazy surprised or excited to be having a kid. I was. I actually was the half of the relationship who was dead set on a kid when my wife supposedly cold gone either way. 
you just can't get your hopes up or look forward to anything until it is here or has happened. I've been home over 7 years now and with my wife for 6, 5. She's truly the catalyst that motivated me to truly change my life and to not give any more of my life to the system. But she'll never know how happy she makes me because she misinterprets my cautious optimism slash realism for pessimism or indifference. I did almost 7 years. Been out 2 years. I'm 35. From Wisconsin. Wisconsin has a law called truth in sentencing. You do 100% of your time. There are multiple head counts where the guards make sure that all of the inmates are accounted for. Every morning at 5 o'clock a.m. I felt like I was doing something wrong if I slept past 5 o'clock a.m. It took me almost 6 months before I slept past 5 o'clock. Even now, 6 o'clock a.m. is sleeping in for me. It has allowed me to never be late to work and show up every day. I was a drug dealer with no work ethic and I slept until noon. Ironically, I'm more successful than I ever thought I would be because of this habit. I actually just got poached by another company who offered me a 150% salary increase. Nice to see you. New tax bracket. In 2 years, I have become a model paralee. My life is great. I married my wife last September. I go to therapy for a multitude of conditions that manifested while I was a guest of the state. I was diagnosed with general and social anxiety disorder and PTSD. I was out a few months and I had a panic attack. I had no idea what was happening to me. I was literally paralyzed and afraid. I thought prison ruined me. It made me a better person in general. I'm not praising Wisconsin Doc by any means. The guards dehumanized the inmates and treated us like pure garbage with no hope. They always told people you'll be back. I won't be back. People that go back produce job security. They want people to come back, so they do what they can to steal your dreams. I changed myself. Prison allowed me to step back and really look at my life. I saw who I hurt. I saw who was there for me. I saw who abandoned me. I became focused on change after my third year. I contemplated suicide because I wasn't even half done with my sentence. After I seriously thought about hanging my life up I committed myself to being the best human being I could be. I revolted by behaving, teaching myself things, and being positive. My life is now amazing. I'm surrounded by people who love me and support me. All of the ex-cons reading this, and people just interested in this thread, that label is bullshit. We are human beings with feelings. We can change. Stay positive and stay hopeful. Never give up. All of my fellow redditors. One love. I had to completely change my sense of time. I agree with all the people who said they ate super fast, but then we would slow walk back from the chow hall any excuse for a few minutes more outside. I made sure I never consolidated enjoyable things. If I had a snack I ate it and concentrated on it. If there was something good on TV, I watched it. Now, I'll snack while I watch a movie because there aren't enough hours in the day, but on the inside I was trying to make hours and days go away. I've got a good job now, and nice respectable friends, but I still react to confrontational situations more quickly, decisively and efficiently than they do. I'm able to pull back at the last minute, but it's pretty clear that violence is not a tool in their arsenal. Taking as long as you want in the shower. For the longest time, after I got out, I took less than 5 minute showers. My friend did 2 and a half in Florida State Prison. Said the first thing he did when he got home was shower until all the hot water ran out. Edit, because this seems to be coming up a lot. This was like 15 years ago. Tankless water heaters weren't really a thing back th I'm not totally sure if they even existed. And if so they weren't common in lower income households. So, yes, it was very possible to run out of hot water. I spent 72 months in prison for a tragic car accident that I had caused. After I was released I kept telling my wife exactly what I was doing without her asking. She thought it was funny at first, but after a few weeks of it, she was starting to get bothered. Not an ex-con, but my stepdad has been in and out of prison for the majority of his life. He always said that, whenever he gets out of prison year, so used to, to it being loud all the time, that when he got home he couldn't sleep, because it was so quiet. 
Not me, but guy who worked for me. When things were very busy, I would often get carry out lunch for everyone, and bring it back to the workplace. This one guy would eat a cheeseburger and french fries in 2 minutes. Wow. Once I asked him, why he ate so quickly. He said well Nobs Fogma, I spent 7 years in a federal prison, and if you didn't eat your meal in 10 minutes, you didn't get anything. That 10 minutes often included the time it took standing in line to get your food. Okay th I never said anything to him about it after that. Being paranoid always looks over my shoulder, and never letting anyone stand behind me. Even people passing on the side of me am always turning my head to see what they're doing. Food I could be the last one, to eat first one done, and I still stand, when I eat around people. Sounds like there's a major epidemic of ex-prisoners with PTSD, that society doesn't talk about. It's part of the reason the US has such a high recidivism rate. Prisoners are dehumanized, whatever issues that put them there are exacerbated, and once released they have less options than before getting in trouble. Add to that PTSD and the never ending fear of going back, it's a small wonder more prisoners don't lose their shoot and be unable to function in society on the outside. Edit, a word. Doing laps. In prison, every time you get time on the yard, you do laps. Seriously, almost every single person does it too. When you get out, it's hard to break that habit. Oh yeah. This is accurate. This guy went to prison. Pacing back and forth in your pot too to get that little bit of cardio in. Making prison commissary only food. Everyone around me thinks it is gross as hell to throw summer sausages, pickles, cheese, Doritos, Cheetos, and such into my ramen noodles. But good lord, I can't stop, and I have been out for 5 years. My dad was in and out of jail when I was a child. When he was out he used to make me jailhouse slams basically whatever you can find to throw into ramen as you said. I thought they were the best thing ever, and it was so cool cause I ate what my dad ate, right? Fast forward about 12 years, and I'm telling my gf this story and she's just like. Your dad fed you prison food. Edit, a word edit too, my highest comment is about my traumatizing childhood lol thanks guys. My ex would sleep a certain way all the time. To me it seemed like he was sleeping, as if he was in a coffin, his arms crossed, and wouldn't move the entire night for a couple months. He eventually broke that habit. Edit, a word. A somewhat friend of mine did a few years and the one habit he cold and shake was distrusting people. He said that people in prison are never nice, if they're nice it's because of a hidden motive. Up to this day he still doesn't trust people who act nice slash generous slash helpful slash towards him. I've grown up in a sort of rough environment, it's like that in general there too. Nothing is free, everything at a price. I had a guy want something from me as a teenager and I didn't do it for him. He brought up to me that he told me where a good hardware store was. Didn't take me there, buy me anything, or even tell me that they for sure had what I was looking for. Just told me where a supposed good one was. He thought this was leverage enough to get what he wanted out of me. Nope. Never been to prison. But I did a few months in county jail. Something I haven't seen mentioned is trading food. When I got out I asked my jail free to trade me her chicken wings for my McCorney. Pure habit. I really cold just went to the kitchen and got more chicken. My uncle was in prison for a while and we've talked a bit about his experience and how it affected him he has a hard time not being violent. Yeah I'd never guess, since he mainly just sits in a corner and smokes, but has been out for nearly 10 years and still always struggles with using his words that guy cannot stand authority. He tells me that it's hard to listen to bosses when you know you're probably smarter and tougher than them. He knows most people feel this way, but he just can't ignore it. Has taken up professional carving, so he can be his boss. Has really in touch with our native roots now, on account of joining a First Nations gang in prison. Doesn't talk much, I don't know, if that's because of prison. But he really only speaks, if he wants to. Not the type of guy who likes to talk just to talk. Doesn't have a lot. He has some sort of abandonment issue or something. So he doesn't want a lot of things to miss, if he goes back to prison. For all the time he doesn't spend with people, has out with nature, or doing something in the wilderness. 
I think it helps keep him calm and feel connected. Nice enough guy, but prison kind of fricked him up I think, and has going to live his life being slightly disconnected with people. Not an ex-con, but judging by a few guys I've worked with. Taking extreme offense at the word goof, or goofy being used in their presence. It is apparently a prison term primarily in Canada, that refers to child molesters slash killers, etc. In prison, you definitely don't want that name attached to you. Still, pretty weird to have a dude blow up, just because you said something they were working on looked a bit goofy, and needed to be fixed. Having your head on a swivel, protecting your personal property in an obsessive manner, and sizing everyone up. When I was locked up, I always knew what was going on 360 degrees around me. Only the last unit I was in had lockers with actually locks, so before that, I had to protect my commie, paperwork, and books all the time. Most people would fight you to take your shoot, because that is the respectful way to do it, but cat burglars are the worst, they sneak around and take shoot. They get fricked up by everyone, when they get caught. It is code, you want my shoot, come get it. Not sneaking around and steal it. I've been out for almost a year and a half, but I still constantly size people up. No matter where it is grocery store, Walmart, walking down the street, I still analyze each person and figure my best course of action, if we have to fight. I've been out 8 years, and I still eat like a dog. Most prisons give you 30 minutes for your meal, but that includes the walk from your cell block to the chow hall, waiting in line, and finding a seat. Normally by the time I actually get a piece of food in my mouth I've already got a co yelling over my shoulder to hurry up. It's really annoying going out to eat with people, and gobbling up your meal, only to be stuck watching normal people eat for 20 minutes. Hardest habit? Talking shoot to dumb old men who think they're right cause they're old. Easiest habit? Im never eating top ramen, or getting a bowl cut from a Mexican barber again. I find myself hoarding toilet paper under my bed. Sometimes I do it without thinking, and I'll look under there, and have 10 rolls of TP. A couple guys I know after being out for 5 to 10 years wrap their arms around their plates and shovel food in their mouths at the speed of light. They are also super defensive of their food. When I first got to know them, I jokingly swiped a chip off one of their plates and he flipped his fork up, and demanded I give it back, freaked me out a little. My friend once told me he got hooked on watching news channels and crappy daytime television. He said he also enjoyed listening to AM radio now, even though he knows specific podcasts exist that are more tailored to him. He killed himself 3 years ago, after getting a 20 year sentence just 1 year after getting out. Edit, a lot of people asking questions, so I'll just go ahead and clarify here. At 18 he served a little over a year in prison for moving marriage lana, got out, violated parole and got caught moving mass amounts of marriage lana and other things like breaking into home slash petty theft which was going to send him back for at least 15 years. After the jig was up he had a while where he was allowed to stay at home where he shot himself with a 9mm pistol in the head. He survived the initial shot but later died two days after going to the hospital. Was a great friend and knew him since elementary school. Top of our graduating class in high school. Just too much exposure to the wrong people. Not an ex-con, but good friend's uncle did 20 years or so. His habit was how he ate. Everything on the ate got immediately cut mixed and devoured fast as hell. Don't know why. He always said it's how you did it there. You ate and GTFO as quick as you could. I knew of a guy who got out after 15 years. He had to call a friend to come and let him out of his apartment. Feet go out, do some shopping or whatever, and then his friend would lock him up for the night. Dude could not work doors himself without a rational fear. He did get better after a few months, but I hear he still has trouble doing things independently. When my dad got out of prison 10 plus years we nicknamed him Martha Stewart, because he was such a clean freak. His home looks like a Nike catalog. He has glass containers for his shoes. He wakes up early to iron slash wash slash scrub everything. When I lived with him for a year, I was grounded so many times over leaving water drops in the sink. I was released at the end of November after 3 years, and my biggest adjustment is grocery shopping. In prison slash jail you typically can only go to the canteen once a week. 
and it isn't like just walking into your local grocery store. You have to write all your items down in advance, so if you forget something, you have to wait another week to get it, or if you're lucky, buy the item off another inmate. So it is still weird adjusting to being able to go and get groceries, hygiene items, etc. Whenever I need them. Eating at a normal pace. I still kind, if hover over my food, and inhale it rather quickly at times. I don't like sitting without my back to the wall. Definitely sleeping habits. Still haven't broke them. Haven't slept a full night in over a decade. Any noise in my eyes are open and I'm wide awake. I can hear really well. A raccoon comes nightly to eat scraps and cat food and I can hear him crunching outside on the porch from bed on the opposite side of the house roughly 60 feet away. Wide awake. I had to stop myself from knocking when getting up from a table. Explaining why this happens also really freaked my family out. An ex-con who works for me always asked to use the restroom. I have politely informed him that there is no need to do that as an adult and can use the restroom whenever he pleases, but he keeps asking and apologizing saying that it's hard to break the habit. He even told me it's hard to pee whenever he hasn't gotten permission out of fear he shouldn't be going in the first place. To get around this now he tells me I'm going to the bathroom. You might want someone to cover my station. So I think we found a happy medium. Being a recluse. Prison is a garage of a bunch of people that don't want a thing to do with each other. Unless you have lived a certain lifestyle, there's no one there you would associate with under normal circumstances. You avoid having any reason to associate with fellow prisoners or the guards. You try to find ways to keep yourself from going totally mad. If you're very lucky, maybe you'll find someone to chat with when walking the yard, or to play chess with. Other than that, you try to live in a private bubble. It's very hard to shake that when back out in the real world.